movie, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Audrey Hepburn plays Holly Golightly, a fashionable New York socialite. Holly Golightly is the subject of this personality analysis video. At first glance, one would think Holly was just a party girl with no substance and whose only interest was acquiring money from wealthy men. But when a further look is given, she is revealed to be much more. Throughout the movie, Holly continually displays the personality traits of neuroticism and extroversion. And over the course of this video, we will explore how and why she possesses these traits. The first trait, high neuroticism, comes from the Big Five personality trait theory. A person who is high in neuroticism has a tendency to experience negative emotions like anger, anxiety, or depression. People with high neuroticism tend to get upset easily, have frequent mood swings, and worry excessively. Upon first meeting Holly, Paul, her neighbor, quickly realizes she is a neurotic type. Holly unknowingly is talking about her neuroticism when she explains to Paul the phenomenon she experiences called the mean reds. Those days when you get the mean reds. The mean reds? You mean like the blues? No. The blues are because you're getting fat or maybe it's been raining too long. You're just sad, that's all. The mean reds are horrible. Suddenly you're afraid and you don't know what you're afraid of. Did you ever get that feeling? Sure. But when I get it, the only thing that does any good is to jump into a cab and go to Tiffany's. Calms me down right away. The quietness and the proud look of it, nothing very bad could happen to you there. If I could find a real life place that made me feel like Tiffany's, then... Then I'd buy some furniture and give the cat a name. Another instance wherein Holly displays neuroticism is when Paul tells her he loves her and she acts impulsively as a result because she is afraid to be loved. Holly, I'm not going to let you do this. You're not going to let me. Holly, I'm in love with you. So what? So what? So plenty. I love you. You belong to me. No. People don't belong to people. Of course they do. I'm not going to let anyone put me in a cage. I don't want to put you in a cage. I want to love you. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Holly. I'm not Holly. I'm not Lula May either. I don't know who I am. I'm like Cat here. We're a couple of no-name slobs. We belong to nobody, and nobody belongs to us. We don't even belong to each other. Stop the cab. What do you think? This ought to be the right kind of place for a tough guy like you. Garbage cans, rats galore. Scram! I said, take off! Speed it! Let's go! Another instance in which her high neuroticism is showcased is when she learns of the death of her brother and shows an emotionally unstable reaction. Please, you must. A theory of personality that could explain Holly's trait of neuroticism is Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow was a humanist, which means he believed that people were responsible for their lives and actions, and that we as humans have the ability to change our behavior and attitudes. His hierarchy of needs has various rungs of varying importance. When the needs of one rung is met, a person can advance to the next one. At the bottom are the needs that are necessary for living, and at the top is self-actualization. Needs that are not necessities, but should be the goal of all people to reach. Maslow would say that the reason for Holly's neuroticism is that she has not yet become self-actualized. She is just barely satisfying the needs at the bottom of the hierarchy. Her current financial situation is precarious. She has trouble forming intimate relationships. She never had a true family, and she doesn't eat very well. 
Because her needs are not being met, Maslow would say this is the reason for her emotional instability. Once she can advance to the higher rungs, she will most likely become more stable. In the present moment, she is only interested in satisfying her basic needs, and she realizes the importance of that. Paul brings to the attention of Holly her inability to reach self-actualization and her needs. By not allowing herself to love another person, she is contributing to her neuroticism and not reaching self-actualization. Paul also points out in this clip that Holly refuses to accept life as a fact, an important part of self-actualization. You know what's wrong with you, miss, whoever you are? You're chicken. You've got no guts. You're afraid to stick out your chin and say, okay, life's a fact. People do fall in love. People do belong to each other because that's the only chance anybody's got for real happiness. You call yourself a free spirit, a wild thing, and you're terrified somebody's gonna stick you in a cage. Well, baby, you're already in that cage. You built it yourself. And it's not bounded in the west by Tulip, Texas, or in the east by Somaliland. It's wherever you go. Because no matter where you run, you just end up running into yourself. The second trait that Holly Go Lightly exhibits throughout the film is extroversion. Extroversion is another big five personality trait, and people who are high in extroversion tend to seek stimulation in the company of others. People high in extroversion can be described as talkative, excitement-seeking, and sociable. In this clip, Holly is hosting a party and showcasing her extroversion. Some party. Who are all these people, anyhow? Who knows? The word gets out. You don't mind, do you, darling? Ooh, reinforcements. Another example of her extroversion is when she asks Paul to go out with her to try things they both had never done. She is showing her need for excitement, typical in extroverts. I don't think I've ever drunk champagne before breakfast before. With breakfast on several occasions. But never before, before. Now I've got a wonderful idea. We could spend the whole day doing things we've never done before. We'll take turns. For something you've never done, and me. Of course, I can't really think of anything I've never done. Hey, did you ever steal anything from a five and ten? When you were a kid, I mean? No. I'm the sensitive, bookish type. Did you? I used to. I still do every now and then, sort of to keep my hand in. Come on, don't be chicken. Anyway, you've never done it, and it's your turn. that could explain Holly's extroversion is Alfred Adler's theory of individual psychology. Adler believed that all human actions were motivated by the striving for superiority. He thought personality was created by a person's need to overcome their feelings of inferiority. Holly's fears of inferiority could have stemmed from her upbringing. She was a poor orphan girl married off at a young age. She left for New York to find a new life, but her past is always lingering and falling behind her. Her extroversion, Adler would say, is her means of overcoming these feelings of inferiority. By being more extroverted, she is being more like the person she wants herself to be, sophisticated, independent, and confident. She socializes with many wealthy and affluent people to make herself feel more superior. 